So I started the uh, year challenge on wild edibles with the question in mind whether one could survive off of wild edibles alone. And I had given examples such as in this book, Survival in the 21st Century by uh, Victoras Kolvenskas. And he says again, do not delay acquaintance with weeds and grasses. Someday there may be nothing else to eat. The once fertile land is being destroyed at a fast pace by advanced forms of civilization. He goes on to say that if your body is highly toxic, a rapid transition to a simple diet of weeds and grasses might induce uncomfortable cleansing reactions. You will think you are starving. This will be true especially if heavy debris of medication, nicotine, and chemical residue in the fat of the body is in the fat of the body. Make the switch slowly while there is still time available. Learn to live simply. So, now I I don't think I have all these. Uh, I don't have nicotine medication or high chemical residues that I'm aware of. Um, I lead a pretty simple life. I've been a I've been a vegetarian. Uh, for for over the past year, and um, and I eat pretty simply, and I've practiced fasting uh, probably a year a year ago or around that time I went on a 10-day water fast, and my weight dropped down to around 155 pounds, um, and I was able to transition back to a normal body weight again. So, um, so I thought I would try this new diet and see, um, what kind of a transition I could make. And I found that it was a very rapid transition, um, and honestly my body couldn't handle it, and I've had to decide to stop for now. So, um, so I made it to day 21 on a wild edibles diet but I believe it was a really rapid transition that uh, that led my body to uh, a starving state so um, so for the meantime you know I'm gonna put it on hold kinda go back to doing what I know how to do uh, get my body weight back up and then uh, kind of plan from there um, but, you know, there are stories in his book. Um, he has the story, as mentioned before, about uh, Dr. Barbara Moore. And uh, in the, on page 117, it talks about the woman 20 years ago. She ate three normal meals a day. Slowly, for 12 years, she reduced her eating until she was keeping fit on one meal a day of grass chickweed, clover, dandelion, and an occasional glass of fruit juice. Now, I was pretty much doing the same thing. I didn't have the fruit juice because I was trying to go for the wild edibles in my neighborhood only, and uh, so I didn't really have any fruit juice. Um, but I had the, I had the chickweed, I had the, you know, I had the grass juice, I had the dandelions, I had the mallow leaves, and I was eating you know, I would sit down and eat mallow leaves and dandelions for 40 minutes straight. Um, and then later at night I would have uh, a glass of the, uh, the grass juice. And uh, my weight dropped down to about 150 pounds in three weeks from 175 pounds. So, uh, you know, I just thought that was too much of a, a big drop. And then... And then also at work, I was I was starting to notice I was lacking energy, whereas uh, in the weeks prior I still had energy, so I pushed forward with it. Um, so when I began to notice that I didn't have as much energy, I thought that was the time to to call it quits. Um, another um, another point to consider, you know, 
there's a lot of stories of different, you know, monks and anchorites, uh, hermits throughout history. Um, there's one in, uh, discussed in Kusin's book right here, uh, Spiritual Nutrition. Uh, Gabriel Kusin talks about uh, Paul the anchorite living, uh, living solely off of dates in the desert. Now, uh, there's another story of uh, Milarepa, a Tibetan monk, who uh, he lived off of stinging nettles alone. And it kind of fascinates the mind, like, how, how can they live off of just that, you know? Um, and then there's another author that I had mentioned, Hilton Hokima, and he talked about a Japanese man, Kakudo Yamashita, who lived 35 years off of uncooked leaves, grasses, and weeds. Now, obviously, if they did do this, they made the transition slowly. Um, you know, Barbara Moore said it took her 12 years. So, trying to do it in 21 days or even a year, that's very ambitious and it's probably not going to happen. Um, so you'd have to really ease into it, I think, uh, if it is possible. But going back to the monks, the reason I think that they're able to do it too, um, aside from perhaps doing it slowly, is you know, a lot of them were just meditating in a cave. They're not really burning a lot of energy. They're just sitting there praying. Um, they're relaxing in a kind of meditative state. And uh, the body doesn't need as much energy. So you can get by on a lot less. Whereas I was continuing to work. So um, those are just some considerations. The last point I will say is... Um, if you're looking to do fasting, see, I struggled to do a 10-day fast on water, and it was very, very hard. Um, and the body gets weak very quickly, obviously. I mean, if you can do one or three days, that's usually pretty good. But um, I found that um, with the with the wheat grass or the grass juice. You can use that as a substitute for a fast, um, and you'll actually be able to go longer than you would on the the water fast. You can stretch it out to 21 days, uh, and if you're including um, weeds like dandelion, those are cleansers for the body. So, um, so while you're fasting, you can throw in the dandelion leaves and the mallows. And those are going to help clean out a lot of the toxins that have built up in your body. So, um, I did learn some important things on on this uh, challenge. And uh, perhaps in the future at some time I'll try again. But uh, for now, <laughs> I think it's wise to call it quits. And uh, learn what I've learned from the experience. So... Uh, Thanks for following along, and uh, I will perhaps make more posts in the future. Later. Bye.